You know, people really have a thing for quotations. We mine them from everything from sitcoms to Shakespeare. We just love to repeat the words of other people. And speechwriters may be the biggest quoters out there. Maybe it's the fact that somebody else has already done the heavy lifting for us. Maybe we hope our own work might someday get quoted for posterity. At any rate, if you look at a speechwriter's bookshelf, chances are you're going to find at least one book of quotations. And no wonder. You can use quotations to some really powerful effect in a speech. You can use them to express an idea better than anything you've been able to write for the past hour. Or you can quote somebody whose opinion your audience respects to support your argument. You can give a concrete example of somebody who holds a particular point of view. You can quote somebody who strikes a strong emotional chord with your audience. And that could be a really positive emotional chord. It could also be a negative one if you're trying to evoke that emotion. And you can set out some common ground with your audience using a source that they know well. Marlena Dietrich loved quotations where she found her own thoughts, quote, beautifully expressed by, with much authority by someone recognized wiser than oneself. Now that said, there are some good reasons to be cautious about quotations. For all the good they do, they do exact a toll. For one thing, you aren't really giving your audience what they want. They came to hear what you have to say, in your own words. And the time that you spend quoting other people is time your audience isn't going to have to communicate with you. Chances are it also costs you in delivery, too. Your delivery is going to be a lot more lively and engaging and energetic when the text is yours than when you're reciting somebody else's quotation. Still, keeping those caveats in mind, a judiciously chosen quotation can make a real difference in a speech. But don't, don't just reach for a copy of Bartlett's and use the first passage that seems appropriate. Take a few extra moments to make your next quotation truly effective. And here are seven ways to do that. First, take the quote less traveled. Some quotations have just worn painfully thin with overuse. They've earned full membership in the quotable cliche Hall of Shame. So ditch the tired old standbys. Look for something unexpected, something your audience hasn't heard a thousand times before. And by the way, unless the definition of a particular word is a key part of your speech, please don't quote the dictionary. Number two, find a parallel. You don't have to limit yourself to quotations that deal with the exact topic of your speech. There's usually an underlying idea with your topic. And a good pithy quotation that addresses that, even if it's from another subject area, it can be a great springboard to a striking metaphor or an analogy. Third, take issue. Don't just quote people you agree with completely. Instead, you can use a fulcrum, you can use a quotation as a fulcrum. So you might say, so-and-so said such-and-such. -such. I think they were only half right. Fourth, excerpt the unexpected. When we think of the sources for quotations, we think of political leaders and great works of literature and not much else. If you listen to most speeches, that's where quotations tend to come from. But your audience may well resonate less strongly with some long-dead statesman than with books or films or... Uh, popular songs, TV shows, even commercials. There's a speech I wrote a few years ago where the high point was a quotation from the movie Mars Attacks. And try looking at sources from cultures other than your own or your audience's. Fifth, make your quotation do all it can for you. I keep hearing speakers cite a quotation and then they leave it hanging there. Keep those words working for you. Echo their structure. Tease out deeper meanings. Explore the quotation's personal meaning to you and its relevance to the audience. You won't just amplify the power of the quotation you've chosen. You'll make it your own. Number six, remember that small is beautiful. The longer the quotation, the more time you're going to spend reading somebody else's words instead of engaging with your audience. A short, pithy quotation packs a lot more power. And finally, trust but verify. Ambrose Bierce defined quotation as the act of repeating erroneously the words of another. Google searches and online sources can turn up just a torrent of quotations. Many of them are wonderful, but a lot of the quotations you'll find online are misremembered or misheard or mistyped or misattributed or just plain mistaken. 
So unless the online source is the originator of the passage you're checking, check it against, sorry, that you're quoting, check it against an authoritative reference. So use quotations sparingly and well, and you'll do your speech and your audience a favor. Not to mention yourself. As Dorothy Sayers put it, I always have a quotation for everything. It saves original thinking. I'm Rob Cottingham.